Frederick George Peter Ingle Finch was a British-born Australian actor. He is best remembered for his role as crazed television anchor man Howard Beale in the film Network, which earned him a posthumous Academy Award for Best Actor, his fifth Best Actor Award from the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, and a Best Actor Award from the Golden Globes. He was the first person to win a posthumous Academy Award in an acting category. Early Life Equals Family Equals Finch was born as Frederick George Peter Ingle Finch in London to Alicia Gladys Fisher. At the time, Alicia was married to George Finch. George Finch was born in New South Wales, Australia, but was educated in Paris in Tsar One Quarter Rich. He was a research chemist when he moved to Britain in 1912 and later served during the First World War with the Royal Army Ordnance Depot and the Royal Field Artillery. In 1915, at Portsmouth, Hampshire, George married Alicia Fisher, the daughter of a Kent barrister. However, George Finch was not Peter Finch's biological father. He learned only in his mid-forties that his biological father was Wentworth Edward Dallas Jock Campbell, an Indian Army officer, whose adultery with Finch's mother was the cause of George and Alicia's divorce, when Peter was two years old. Alicia Finch married Jock Campbell in 1922. Equals early childhood equals George gained custody of Peter and he was taken from his mother and brought up by his paternal grandmother Laura Finch in Vaucresson, France. As a member of the 1922 British expedition to Mount Everest, George Finch reached a new world record altitude of 27,300 feet before retreating when his climbing partner's oxygen apparatus failed. In 1925 Laura took Peter with her to Adyar, a theosophical community near Madras. India for a number of months, and the young boy lived for a time in a Buddhist monastery. Undoubtedly as a result of his childhood contact with Buddhism Finch always claimed to be a Buddhist. He is reported to have said, I think a man dying on a cross is a ghastly symbol for a religion. And I think a man sitting under a bow tree and becoming enlightened is a beautiful one. In 1926 he was sent to Australia to live with his great-uncle Edward Herbert Finch at Greenwich Point in Sydney. He attended the local school until 1929, then North Sydney Intermediate High School for three years. Early career, after graduating, Finch went to work as a copyboy for the Sydney Sun and began writing. However he was more interested in acting, and in late 1933 appeared in a play, Caprice, at the Repertory Theatre. He started appearing in stage shows for Doris Fitton, worked as a sideshow spreaker at the Sydney Royal Easter Show, in vaudeville with Joe Cody and as a foil to American comedian Bert LeBlanc. At age 19 Finch toured Australia with George Solis traveling troupe. This, along with continuous stage work, led to the attention of Australian Broadcasting Commission radio drama producer Lawrence H. Cecil, who was to act as his coach and mentor throughout 1939 and 1940. He was Chris in the children's session in the first muddle-headed wombat. He later starred with Nava Carglin in an enormously popular series by Max Afford as husband and wife detectives Jeffrey and Elizabeth Blackburn as well as other ABC radio plays. Equals first films equals, Finch's first screen performance was in a 1935 short film, The Magic Shoes, an adaptation of the fairy tale Cinderella. He made his feature film debut in 1938 with a supporting role in Dad and Dave Come to Town for director Ken G. Hall who went on to cast Finch in a larger role supporting Cecil Kellaway in Mr. Chedworth Steps Out. Equals War Service Equals, Finch enlisted in the Australian Army on June 2, 1941. He served in the Middle East and was an anti-aircraft gunner during the bombing of Darwin. During his war service he was allowed to continue to act in radio, theatre and film, notably The Rats of Tobruk. He produced and performed army concert party work and in 1945 toured bases and hospitals with two Terence Rattigan plays he directed, French Without Tears and While the Sun Shines. Finch was discharged from the army on October 31, 1945 at the rank of sergeant. Equals Mercury Theatre and Laurence Olivier equals, after the war, Finch continued to work extensively in radio and established himself as Australia's leading actor in the medium winning Macquarie Awards for Best Actor in 1946 and 1947. He also worked as a compere, producer and writer. 
In 1946, Finch co-founded the Mercury Theatre Company, which put on a number of productions in Sydney over the next few years, as well as running a theatre school. A 1948 performance of The Imaginary Invalid on the factory floor of O'Brien's Glass Factory in Sydney brought him to the attention of Laurence Olivier and Vivian Lee, then touring Australia with the Old Vic Company. Olivier encouraged Finch to move to London, and he left Australia in 1948. Equals British career equals, when Finch arrived in Britain, Olivier became his mentor and put him under long-term contract. His first big break was being cast in James Bride's play Daphne Laureola at the Old Vic supporting Edith Evans. In 1952 he performed at St James's Theatre, King Street, London, in Sir Lawrence Olivier's and Gilbert Miller's The Happy Time a comedy by Samuel Taylor. He played the part of Papa. He also received acclaim for his first role in a British film, Train of Events, playing a murderous actor. Critic C. A. Lejeune praised his work saying he adds good cheekbones to a quick intelligence and is likely to become a cult, I fear. The Scotsman said he should be regarded as one of the most hopeful recruits to the British screen. His performance as a Pole in Daphne Laureola led to his casting as a Polish soldier in The Mine of a Story the sequel to the wartime morale-boosting film Mrs. Minerva. Unlike its predecessor, it was poorly received critically. The same year he also appeared in the more successful The Wooden Horse playing an Australian prisoner of war. During this time, Finch's closeness to the Olivier family led to an affair with Olivier's beautiful but increasingly unstable wife, Vivian Lee, which began in 1948, and continued on and off for several years, ultimately falling apart due to her deteriorating mental condition. In 1951 Finch played Iago on stage opposite Orson Welles in Othello. Despite his stage experience, Finch, like his mentor Olivier, suffered from stage fright, and as the 1950s progressed he worked increasingly in film. His roles increased in size and prestige, including being cast as the villain Flambeau in Father Brown and as the lead in the Hollywood film Elephant Walk. However, he continued to appear on the stage, playing Trigger in Inchek Hub's The Seagull opposite Peggy Ashcroft and Vanessa Redgrave in The West End in 1964-65. Equals film stardom equals, towards the end of 1954 Finch's contract with Laurence Olivier was about to expire and he instead signed a seven-year contract with the rank organization worth a £87,500 to make one film a year for them. We are going to build Peter into a major British star, said Earl St. John, Rank's head of production, at the time. Finch's first roles for Rank under the new arrangement were Undistinguished, Passage Home, Make Me an Offer, Josephine and Men and Simon and Laura. However, in 1956 he appeared in two major hits, A Town Like Alice and The Battle of the River Plate, which saw exhibitors vote him the seventh most popular British star at the box office. The following year his ranking went up to third, being the fifth most popular regardless of nationality. He returned to Australia to make two films, Robbery Under Arms and The Shira Lee. The success of The Nun's Story saw Finch become an international star, although he never worked in Hollywood for an extended period of time, preferring to base himself in London. He was originally chosen to play Julius Caesar in Cleopatra and film scenes in London, but when the film was postponed he withdrew. The role instead went to Rex Harrison. He won BAFTA awards for his performances in The Trials of Oscar Wilde, No Love for Johnny in Sunday Bloody Sunday. His performance in the latter also earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor in a Leading Role. Other notable films included The Pumpkin Eater and Far From the Madding Crowd. A profile on Finch in Scroll and Online claimed it is arguable that no other actor ever chalked up such a rewarding CV in British films. Equals posthumous Oscar equals. At the time of Finch's death, he was doing a promotional tour for the 1976 film Network in which he played the television anchor man Howard Beale who develops messianic pretensions. He was nominated for a Best Actor Oscar for that role, posthumously winning the award which was accepted by his widow, a leather finch. Although James Dean, Spencer Tracy and Massimo Troisi were also posthumously nominated for a Best Actor Oscar, Peter Finch was the first actor to have won the award posthumously, as well as the first Australian actor to win a Best Actor award. 
He was the only posthumous winner of an Oscar in an acting category until Heath Ledger won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in 2009. Finch also won five Best Actor Awards from the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, including one for Network. Shortly before he died he told a journalist, We all say we're going to quit occasionally. I'd like to have been more adventurous in my career. But it's a fascinating and not ignoble profession. No one lives more lives than the actor. Movie making is like geometry and I hated maths. But this kind of jigsaw I relish. When I played Lord Nelson one worked the pool deck in his uniform. I got extraordinary shivers. Sometimes I felt like I was staring at my own coffin. I touched the character. There lies the madness. You can't fake it. Equals death equals, after suffering a heart attack in the lobby of the Beverly Hills Hotel, Finch died on January 14, 1977, at the age of 60. He is interred in the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Personal life, Finch was married three times. In 1943, he married Romanian-born French ballerina Tamara Chinruva. They worked together on a number of films. They had a daughter, Anita, born in 1950. They divorced in 1959, after she discovered his affair with actress Vivian Lee in California. He then married South African-born actress Yolande Turner. They had two children together, Samantha and Charles Peter. During their marriage, Finch had an affair with actress Shirley Bassey. Bassey had a daughter, also called Samantha, born in 1963. Bassey's husband at the time, the openly gay film producer Kenneth Hume, believed that Finch was her biological father. Finch and Turner divorced in 1965. In 1972 Finch married Mavis Eleather Barrett, who was known as Eleather Finch. They had a daughter together, Diana. Biographies in 1954, the Australian journalist and author George Johnston wrote a well-researched series of biographical articles on Finch, his life, and his work, which appeared in the Sun-Herald, on four consecutive Sundays, which was certainly the first detailed account of Finch's life ever published. Finch later provided the inspiration for the character Archie Culverton in Johnston's novel, Clean Straw for Nothing. In 1980, American author Elaine Dundee published a biography of Finch titled Finch, Bloody Finch, a biography of Peter Finch. That year, his second wife, Yolande Finch, also published a posthumous account of their life together, Finchy, My Life with Peter Finch. Another biography had previously been published by his friend and colleague Trader Faulkner, in 1979. According to Brian McFarlane, in the Encyclopedia of British Film, Hosted by British Film Institute Screen Online, Finch did not emerge unscathed from a life of well publicized hell raising, and several biographies chronicle the affairs and the booze, but a serious appraisal of a great actor remains to be written. Filmography Theatre credits equals Australia equals Caprice by Silva in a Euro Repertory Theatre, Sydney, 1933, The Ringer by Edgar Wallace as Samuel Hackett a Euro Studio Theatre. Sydney, 1934, Peter Pan by J. M. Barry as a pirate at Euro Savoy Theatre, Sydney, 1934 Euro directed by Doris Fitton, Counselor at Law by Elmer Rice, as the boot black at Euro Savoy Theatre, Sydney, 1934 Euro directed by Doris Fitton with Sumner Locke Elliott, Richard of Bordeaux by Gordon Daviot, as the fair page model in a Euro Savoy Theatre, Sydney. 1935 A Euro directed by Doris Fitton with Sumner Locke Elliott and John Wyndham, Joe Cody's vaudeville show A Euro McCabean Hall, Sydney, 1935, Bert LeBlanc comedy show, A Stooge de LeBlanc A Euro Sydney, 1935, Jimmy Sharman's Boxing Tent, A Spruiker A Euro Royal Easter show, Sydney, 1935, Interference by Roland Petrie and Harold Dearden, As Douglas Held A Euro St. James Hall, Sydney, 1935 A Euro directed by Edward Howell with Howell, Rosalind Kennedale and Therese Desmond, False Colours by Frank Harvey A Euro Independent Theatre. Sydney, 1935. So This Is Hollywood A Euro Apollo Theatre, Melbourne, 1935 A Euro with Robert Capron, Lou Vernon and Thelma Scott, 
under the Big Top a Euro touring show with George Solly, various Queensland towns, 1936, playing Herbert Hughes in Laughter of Fools by H. F. Maltby, Smithers in Married by Proxy by Avery Hopwood, Peter in Fair and Warmer by Avery Hopwood, Hunter in Ten Minute Alibi by William Armstrong a Euro all directed by William McGowan with Murray Matheson, Rosalind Kennedale, Leslie Crane, Eva Moss, Norman French, Julia Adair and George Douglas. White Cargo by Leon Gordon, as Ashley a Euro Theatre Royal, Sydney, 1938 a Euro directed by Ben Lewin with Mary McGreg, James Raglan, Frank Bradley, personal appearance by Lawrence Riley as Clyde Pelton a Euro Theatre Royal, Sydney in Comedy Theatre, Melbourne, 1938 a Euro directed by Peter Deering, with Betty Balfour, Frank Bradley, Cecil Perry, Army Concert Party Work 1941 a Euro 1944. Night of January 16 by Ayn Rand, as Dar Flint a Euro Minerva Theatre, Sydney, 1944 a Euro directed by Frederick J. Blackman with Lawrence H. Cecil and Thelma Grigg, while the sun shines by Terence Rattigan, as the Earl of Harpenden in a Euro Minerva Theatre, Sydney 1944 a Euro directed by Frederick J. Blackman with Pat MacDonald, Ron Randall, Roger Barry. French Without Tears by Terence Rattigan A Euro Various Army Hospitals and Bases, 1945 A Euro Finch Directed, Diamond Cuts Diamond by Nikolai Gogol, Azikareva Euro Conservatorium of Music, Sydney, 16 A Euro July 17, 1946 A Euro Directed by Sydney John Kay, The Pastry Baker by Lope de Vega A Euro Conservatorium of Music, Sydney, 16 a Euro July 17, 1946 a Euro director only, The Broken Picture by Heinrich von Kleist, as Adam a Euro Conservatorium of Music, Sydney, 16 a Euro July 17, 1946, French Without Tears by Terence Rattigan a Euro Kalara Hall, Sydney in Sydney Radio Theatre, 1947 a Euro Finch directed a cast including Leonard Fayol, Tom Lake, Alan White, Adele Brown, Ron Patton, Midsummer Night by Largo's Bar Ra Cubed a Euro Touring Production, Sydney 1948 a Euro Directed Only, Anatole's Wedding Morning by Arthur Schnitzler a Euro Touring Production, Sydney 1948 a Euro Directed Only, The Imaginary Invalid by Molly Ree, as Argon a Euro O'Brien's Glass Factory in Sydney Town Hall, Sydney, 1948 a Euro Directed by Sydney John Kay with June Wimble, Elsie Dane, Al Thomas, John Farson, Patricia Harrison, Alan Ashbolt, Tom Lake. Equals Britain equals Daphne Laureola by James Bridey, as Ernest Piaster Euro Wyndham's Theatre, London, 1949 A Euro directed by Murray MacDonald for Laurence Olivier Productions with Edith Evans and Felix Aylmer, The Damascus Blade by Bridget Boland, as Henry Adams A Euro Provincial Duh. 1950 A Euro directed by Laurence Olivier for Laurence Olivier Productions with John Mills and Beatrix Lehman, The White Falcon Provincial Duh, 1950 A Euro starring Basil Radford and Sheila Burrell A Euro Finch worked on this as a director only, Captain Carvalho by Dennis Canan, as Professor Winke. Euro St. James Theatre, London, 1950 A Euro directed by Laurence Olivier for Laurence Olivier Productions with Diana Winyard and Jill Bennett. Point of Departure by Gina Nui and Kitty Black, as Orpheus A Euro Duke of York Theatre, London, 1951 A Euro directed by Peter Ashmore for The Company of Four with My Zetterling and Stephen Murray, A Fellow by William Shakespeare, as Iago A Euro St. James Theatre, London, 1951 A Euro directed by Orson Welles for Laurence Olivier Productions with Orson Welles, Gidron Year, Maxie Nordley and Edward Mulhair, The Happy Time by Samuel Taylor, as Papa A Euro St. James Theatre, London, 1952 A Euro directed by George Devine for Laurence Olivier Productions, with Geneva V. Page, Ronald Squire, George Devine, Rachel Kempson, Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare, as Mercutio A Euro Old Vic Theatre, London, 1952 A Euro directed by Dennis Carey with Claire Bloom, Athan Seeler, Louis Casson and Alan Badal. An Italian Straw Hat by Hugo Neil Abish and Mark Michel adapted by Thomas Walton, as Mons Beaujolais A Euro Old Vic Theatre, London, 1953 A Euro directed by Dennis Carey with Lawrence Payne, Paul Rogers, Jane Wenham, 
Gidron Year, two for the seesaw by William Gibson, as Jerry Ryan a Euro Theatre Royal, Brighton and Theatre Royal Haymarket, London, 1958 a Euro 59 a Euro directed by Arthur Penn for H.M. Tennant with Jerry Jeed, The Seagull by Anton Chekhov translated by Angelico, as Trigger in a Euro Queen's Theatre, London. 1964 a Euro directed by Tony Richardson with Peggy Ashcroft, Peter McInery, Vanessa Redgrave, Paul Rogers and George Devine. Select TV credits, The Forgotten Elite. Select radio credits, The Laughing Woman, Interference a Euro the first episode of Australia's version of Lux Theatre of the Air, Men in White, The Daughter of the Dragon, Night Nurse, Mutiny on the Bounty Mr. Deeds Comes to Town, the Laughing Woman a Euro reprise of his performance for which Finch won the 1946 Macquarie Award for Best Male Actor on Australian Radio, Such Men Are Dangerous as Tsar Paul I, Crime and Punishment as Rascal Nikov, Redemption by Tolstoy a Euro Finch won the 1947 Macquarie Award for Best Male Actor on Australian Radio, When You Come Home, Big Sister, Crossroads of Life, Man of Destiny. Notes References Dundee Elaine. Finch, Bloody Finch, A Biography of Peter Finch. New York, Holt, Reinhardt and Winston, 1980. ISBN 0-03-041796-1. ISBN 978-0-03-041796-2. Faulkner, Trader. Peter Finch, A Biography. London, Angus and Robertson. 1979. ISBN 0-207-95831-9. ISBN 978-0-207-95831-1. Finch, The Land. Finchy, My Life with Peter Finch. London, Arab Books, 1980. ISBN 0-09-924190-0. ISBN 978-0-09-924190-4. Johnson, G. The Success Story of Peter Finch, The Sun Herald Pages 21 a Euro 23, Johnson, G. The Long Road to London Pages 23 a Euro 25, Johnson, G. Dad and Dave, and then the war. The Sun Herald August 15, 1954, 23, Johnson, G. The Thames is non-inflammable but an Australian in London leapt up a stairway to stardom. The Sun Herald August 22, 1954, 23, Johnson, G. The Threat and the Promise. The Sun Herald August 29, 1954, 47. External links. Finch. Peter at the British Film Institute Scrum Online. Peter Finch at the Internet Movie Database. Peter Finch Media Holdings at the National Film and Sound Archive of Australia. Peter Finch Australian Theatre Credits at AUS Stage. Peter Finch at Australian Dictionary of Biography. Audio interview with Peter Finch from 1973 discussing Australia. Peter Finch's appearance on This Is Your Life. Documentation relating to Peter Finch's war service at National Archives of Australia